In this video, we will discuss how to do basic linear regression in R Commander and with R Studio. And this is just for the case of one predictor variable and one outcome. So let's start by looking at R Commander. So let's open R and let's load our packages. So first we can load R Commander. And then we need to load the package that has our data in it, which is hsour2. Go back to our commander and let's load the data set. The data set we'll be using is called US Air Pollution. So click on Data, Data in Packages, Read Data Set from an Attached Package. Double click hsour2 and then click on US Air Pollution. You can just click within this box and then hit the U button to jump down. Double click and click OK. So now we have our data loaded and linear regression with our commander is very simple. Click on statistics, fit models, linear regression, response variable, this is your outcome, this is what you want to predict, so we're going to choose SO2. Then explanatory variable, and it says you can pick one or more, but we're only dealing with the case so far of one predictor variable, so we will just select one thing. Let's select the top one, which is number of manufacturing facilities within the city, and then click OK. So it shows us first what the script looks like. We'll talk about that more in a moment. And then here is our output. So let's scroll up. It tells you what the formula is. So LM is the function, linear model. Formula is SO2 predicted by manufacturing. The data that's being used is US air pollution. Don't worry about the residuals. Go down and look at coefficients. So the first row is always going to be the intercept and the second row is the predictor variable. And in the estimate column we have two things. For the intercept we have this is the y-intercept value or in terms of the equation y hat equals bx plus a. This is the a value. And then the estimate associated with the predictor variable is b. So this is our unstandardized regression coefficient. We have standard errors both for the intercept and the regression coefficient. We have t-values and we have p-values. And typically we don't worry that much about the intercept. It's just not a very interesting number. We're concerned more with the regression coefficient itself and it's highly statistically significant. The p-value is very small. And then down here we can look at the residual standard error and it tells you the number of degrees of freedom that's calculated on the multiple R squared, and the multiple R squared really is applicable for when you have more than one predictor. So if you have just a single predictor, then this is just R squared. This is just the square of the correlation between the X and Y variables. You can adjust that for various things. And then finally you have an F statistic with its degrees of freedom and the p-value. And notice that the p-value for the F statistic is the same as the p-value for the regression coefficient. And that's because we have just this single predictor. Okay, so that's how to do linear regression in R Commander. So now let's turn to R Studio. So the first thing we need to do is open R Studio. And then we need to open the regression script. So let's go to File, Open File, and then find the folder that has your script in it called Regression Script for R. Open that up. So the first thing we need to do is to load the data set that we're using, US Air Pollution, that is within the hsour 2 package, and then attach that data set. And so we're going to start with just the basic linear model with the output. And there actually needs to be two steps to do this. So the first thing we're doing here is creating the model and putting that into its own data set called Model 1. So again, LM stands for linear model. SO2 is the variable that we're predicting. Tilde sign 
manu is the variable that's the predictor and we're telling it the data set so we can run that and then we need to run summary of model one to be able to see the output and so this is the same output that we got when we used our commander gives us the call the residuals the coefficients and then the other information down below and one thing to know about this lm command is that it only works if you have complete data so if you have missing data you have to do something additional to get this to run and that's what this last piece is here na.action equals na.exclude and that is telling R to exclude cases that have missing data and run the model on everyone else who has complete data so we can run this model it's going to give us the exact same answer as before though because the this data set doesn't have any missing data next we can compute confidence intervals for the intercept and the B value so C-O-N-F-I-N-T is the command and then the name of the model within the parentheses and this is consistent with what we told R up here that our model name was so just make sure if you change the model name you need to change it down here as well click run and here it's giving us output for 2.5 percent and 97.5 percent so this is our lower limit and our upper limit so the confidence interval for the manufacturing unstandardized coefficient ranges from 0.02 to 0.04 right, and we can see here that this is a pretty precise estimate of what we're interested in it's not a whole lot different from the lower to the upper limit so that's good we can also get standardized coefficients so a beta value rather than a b value to do that we need to use the quant psych package so first we will load that package and it looks like based on the error here that I need to install that package within R so I'll go back to packages install packages choose a crayon mirror and then find quant psych double click now that it's installed I should be able to load it through our studio that looks much better now we can run lm.beta so we still have a linear model but now we want the beta coefficients of model one and that's all it gives you is the beta coefficient 0.64 and all the other information is the same as in the previous output so if you want to know the standard error and the t-value and the p-value that correspond to that beta coefficient you have to go back up to your original output to see that there are also a couple of ways we can make sure that our data are adhering to our assumptions and to do this we're first going to create a matrix for our layout and this is saying that we want four cells we want them to put it in the order one two three four and this is going to be a two by two this will allow four plots to all be visible on a single graph and we have to make room for our output so let's look and see what happens when we don't have room for our output we just it appears but we just don't see it so you need to make your window bigger so that you can see the figures that you just asked are to create so we have four because we told it to create this layout so we could see all four together so the first we have residuals versus fitted where we have the residuals on the y-axis and the fitted values on the x-axis and the points in this figure should not have any structure or pattern and the scatter should not increase as the fitted values get bigger so we've got a little bit of a problem here that most of the cities are clustered on this low end and we have a few that are on the higher end so we've got some strange things going on in the data next we have scale location this is similar to the residuals versus fitted plot as you can see these look pretty similar but this uses the square root of the standardized residuals and the point should be along this line so again we can see we have several outliers both at the low end and at the higher end of that standardized residual so we have some cities 
where the observed value is quite a bit different from the predicted value. Next we have the normal QQ plot. This is one of my favorites to look at in terms of figuring out if our data are behaving themselves. And the points should be along the line. Most of the points are pretty good, but we do have some cities, Providence, Pittsburgh, Albany, that are outliers. And then finally, we have the residuals versus leverage plot. And I think this one is less useful. It's almost too much information. There's too much going on. But this can be used to see which y values have the biggest effects on the parameter estimates. So the ones that are the furthest away are the ones having the biggest effects. Again, Providence, Pittsburgh, these outliers are really influencing the outcome of our regression model. Okay, next we just have a simple line that and it allows this plot space to go back to the default, which is just one column. So we'll run that just so we can get back to normal. And now we're going to create a histogram to check for the normality of the distribution of residuals. So the first thing that we have to do is to compute studentized residuals. That's what this part does. This is short for studentized residuals of Model 1. We're going to put that in a data set called SResid. And these are like standardized residuals, but they ignore the current data point. So it's just a little bit specialized. So we can click Run on that command. And now we're creating a histogram using this SResid data set we just created. And the main equals distribution of studentized residuals. That'll give us a nice label on that figure. So since we want to run both lines at the same time, we need to highlight them before we click Run. And then here is our distribution of studentized residuals with the label we said to put on it. And the last thing we can do here is to draw a no normal curve on this figure. And these, this set of commands, let's run them all three at the same time, will draw a normal curve on our figure. So there it is. So we have an outlier over here. We kind of have more cities here than we should have. So as we've seen through some of the other figures, we do have some non-normality in this data set. Okay, so that is how to run linear regression with one predictor with both our commander and our studio.